Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to Ask That Podcast on YouTube. Get another zine. And that's pretty much what you're getting from movie mags nowadays. You ain't getting, I mean, magazines don't really exist. You're going to get zines. They're going to be in this trade paperback form, which, hey, makes it 10 bucks an issue. But, you know, that nobody's really making any money off this. So 10 bucks an issue, you know, slicing up. You know, what's everybody making? A dollar? You know, that. Definitely worth it. This is 42nd Street Pete's Presents Grand House Purgatory Issue 17. I think this is the newest issue. We got Lynn Lowry, Judy Matheson, Mr. No Legs, Miss 45, Movie Gimmicks, and more. And look at this cover. You know, shocking here in the brain. Here, we'll pull it in. We'll pull it in. Got the crazy mad doctor. He's shocking that guy in the brain. He's strangling this woman. On the back, just a minute. Okay. And this is from twice a year. It doesn't say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is Pete talking about uh, living through the pandemic, black exploitation films matter, death of conventions, which yeah, there wasn't any, and saying about because he lost you know, some friends. All those people have died since the last issue. Stuart Gordon, Eddie Garcia, Dan Cesarki. I'm guessing. Okay. Samantha Fox. Oh, shit. I didn't really shit. Like Ken Osmond, Eddie Haskell. Fred Willard. Yeah. Um, I was like, modern people would know him as Roseanne. Um, Martin Mull's husband on there. Uh, Anthony James. Okay. He was in Forgiven, Unforgiven with Clint Eastwood. Danny Havoc. John Saxon, of course. Joel Reed. Richard Hurd. Brian Dennehy. Uncle Bob, Wilford Brimley. Oh, my God. Sing about original Monster Kid, Ted Newsom. Okay, Ballyhoo and Gimmicks, how to sell a movie. It's not 3D and all the other gimmicks. The Upchuck Cup and it was a Merjo. That was a, it was a skeleton that, okay, during the scene in the film, the skeleton, um, this is House on Haunted Hill. Easy to find. It's public domain. You can go find it anywhere. It's on YouTube. or You got one of those horror, free horror movie things on your Roku or Amazon Fire. House on Hunt Hill is going to be on there. As a scene where a skeleton rises up out of the pit ass and like flies towards the camera where well, the lights would shut off in the theaters and there was a, like on a pulley and rope, a glow skeleton that would come out and go around like the edge of the theater and go on the other side, like on the other side, on the right hand side on the curtain. And they stopped it after a while from what I heard because like kids were throwing like shit at it and beating the fuck out of it. Up Chuck Chuck, up, uh, uh, the up Chuck, up Chuck Cup was with, oh uh, shit, I don't remember. I have not... Memories of Times Square. This is a good little article. Lynn Lowry. I forget how much stuff she's done. I really do. This was a really, really good interview. I got this in... I don't know when this is there. I got this probably like in November. So it took me a little while. I haven't read everything, but I've read a good chunk of it. Scariest Man in Film. Leo Gordon. Didn't know shit about it until I read this. I'm like, oh, where the drive-in once stood. Takes a chance on a masker, baby. Darker than Amber, the fight scene then, all fight scenes. Fuck yes. Okay, Mr. No Legs. Okay. Just look at that, let that seep in. This is one of those back in the day. Where's the other one? There used to be a torrent tracker. I don't bit torn hardly at all anymore. But there used to be a torn tracker that was like called Tracker 3. And it was just like odd fucking movies. And a lot of them were like VHS ribs, VCD ribs, you know, foreign releases. They just threw up this one and all. The guy who put it, they'd always put like a few pictures to go with it so you could figure out, you know, kind of if you couldn't guess from the title what it was. So they put up the title Mr. No Legs and it was a VHS rip. And they showed this guy, Mr. No Legs there in the wheelchair, like shooting like rockets out of the wheelchair in one picture, jumping out of it and like kung fu fighting this guy. So I was like, I gotta get it. Love the fuck out of this movie. And it's coming out from, it might be out on Blu-ray right now from Master Video. It never hit DVD. It's not hard to find a rip of that VHS. It's not gonna look real good. But really, really crazy ass exploitation film. He has no legs. He's a Vietnam, I think he was a like a legit Vietnam vet that lost his legs. He became a kung fu guy. Death Wish. Death Wish sequels. You can't top the original. That's true. 
But you know what? Death Wish 2 and 3, you know, 3, 3 is a lot better than 2. 4 fucking sucks. 5, I haven't seen 5 in forever. I've got all of them but the remake. I've seen it, I just don't own it. The White Buffalo, I have not seen this shit. I do want to see it now. That's one thing about zines like this. It gets me wanting to see films I normally would not watch. It's Charles Bronson. So, okay. Grindhouse Western Ruffies and Scavengers and Hotspur. I've seen Hotspur. I've never seen Scavengers. The fucking Western Ruffies. The Mitchum Brothers. We followed in Dad's footsteps and wound up in the Grindhouse. There's uh, Chris. Vendetta. This is on... Um, like Amazon Prime right now? The last sleazy women in prison film. Sounds really, really fucking good. Tick, tick, tick. No, it's not a black exploitation film. I have not seen it. It's on my list of stuff to look for. Miss 45. Oh, shit. Have y'all not seen this? Really, really good. Is it 81? Wow, I thought it was 70s. I thought it was like 79. Uh, another one of the rape revenge films from that era. Kind of like a female version of Death Wish. In 81, and the lead actress is just, she's just, pretty, oh, God. Thou shall not kill except, 1985. All right, so. 19, late 1990, we get cable. And there's this show on there, hosted by Jonathan Ross, on Discovery Channel, called, like, Incredibly Strange Film Show. And I learned about luchador movies, which I knew who luch I knew what luchadors were. And I learned about how Sam Raimi had done stuff besides the Evil Dead stuff. You know, he's not really kind of sort of in this, but he is. So, about a year or so later, I remember the, uh, there's a really great video store. It's out of a drugstore of all places. Like, it took up, for a while, they took up three-fourths of this drugstore. Great prices. It's like six rentals for six bucks for three days. New releases, old releases, didn't matter. And they had video games. They even had like Game Boy games for it. It was really cool. They had a copy of Thou Shall Not Kill Except for sale for like five bucks. Oh, come on. Just the tape, you know. Did it have, the, I don't remember it having a slipcase. I remember, it, you know, it was probably an extra rental. Bought it and watched the fuck out. It was basically Vietnam vets coming home and fighting like crazy Manson cultists. It is, wow. I want to say it's based on one of the early uh, Sam Raimi films, you know, they did before Evil Dead 1. There's Sam Raimi. Baba Yaga, which I've seen. It's been a long time. It's on um, one of the Brentwood like horror sets. It's got like 10 horror films on it. It's a VHS rip, but it's watchable. And there's better versions. If you watch and enjoy, there's a lot better versions out there. Session 9. One of those where I own it. Have never watched it. Sounds really good. Death Ship. Fucking Death Ship. <laughs> oh, man. That poster is really, really badass. I'll give it that. That, that is like a wicked-ass poster. Look at that. Those who survived the ghost ship are better off dead. Death Ship. Da -da 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 -da. Death Ship. Judy Matheson. Some hammer stuff. What's up there now, ladies? Oh, remember, see... Remember that picture being in the fucking one of the Crestwood House books? You're like, oh shit. Confessions of a Window Cleaner. Daughter of Horror. Night of the Spanish Fly. <laughs> fucking going to see a porn movie. That's a great one. The Female Bunch. Uh, if you go back on the channel, this poster, not that exact one, but the a Female Bunch poster was uh, reviewed on here by old Bat32. He wrote something for an issue of. Purgatory. I think it's the issue before this one. I don't buy every issue as they come out. It's kind of like, I got a couple extra bucks. I'm making an off Amazon, throwing an issue, you know. Things that suck department. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those. Nazi exploitation, the scummiest subgenre. Yeah. Ilsa. Salon Kitty over here. Ooh, the Beast and Heat. I've seen a bunch of these. Tracker 3. Cheeky. The Tinto Brass Collection. Lord of Illusions, the Blu-ray report. This is the director's cut. I love this movie, but also love the story it's based on. It's coming to gold used cars. Used cars are so fucking good. And nobody really talks about it anymore. Oh, Shock Cinema took an ad out. Fuck yeah, I love Shock Cinema. 
Other stuff on sale from this company. That's cool. When was this printed? Oh, I thought I got I got it in, in uh, December then. Shit, December two thousand twenty. Hey, Cocal, Texas. Definitely worth the ten bucks. Go help Pete and everybody out. You know, drop some money. Find, go through there and look at the covers. Just find a cover, catch it out, order it. You know, got to pay a little tax. It's gonna be about eleven dollars, but hell, I got more reading out of this than I would have if I paid. The 11 bucks it cost me to buy a fucking Fangoria or Rue Morgue or is Horror Hound even around? Any of those horror mags. Well, oh, hope y'all enjoyed that. Remember if you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, all the other bullshit. Talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.